Hello everyone, my name is Jim Webber, I am Neo4j's Chief Scientist, and I'd like to talk to you today about using Neo4j at very large scale. But first, let me ask you a question. Can you figure out what the following variables are? 125x equals 48y equals 3z. No, you probably can't yet. What about if I say 20x equals 50y equals 0.033z? No? Well, if a J could help you solve this. Let me explain. But first, let me get one thing off my chest. Scale is important. Scale has a computer science component, data structures, algorithms, fault tolerance, all of that good stuff. It has a practical systems component. How do we build great computer systems that can take advantage of that scale? And it has a disproportionate ideological component, the kind of pub chat that gets conflated with actual computer science. And it's the ideological component, I think, that gets in the way of building really compelling systems. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, Jim, are you just making excuses? No, I'm not. Neo4j Multicluster supports scale for various workloads and has done uh, for several Neo4j releases. Let's move along here. There's much more to discuss. So let's not talk ideology. Let's instead talk practice. And something that really caught my attention late last year was a presentation at Graphconet New York 2018 by David Fox, who's uh, an engineer at Adobe, so one of the large uh, internet-facing uh, service providers. And David articulated something that I've been struggling myself to articulate over several years, which is how to quantify his experience of using Neo4j at very large scale. But what's interesting about David's experiences is that he has built a similar system in other technologies before he encountered Neo4j. So let me tell you what they're doing. Adobe Behance is a large uh, web-based service for creatives. I think of it as like Twitter for creatives. When one logs into Behance, one can follow other creatives and get a curated view of their work. And David and his team worked on the activity stream part of Behance, so a critical part of the infrastructure for generating revenue for Adobe. And what's interesting about their experience is that it's in the past. It's in the past tense. And so each time they've built and rebuilt this system, they have gathered quantitative and qualitative metrics, which I think are interesting for us to explore. Now, the first version of the activity stream that they built was with MongoDB. And let me pose the question, what's the largest MongoDB cluster that you've ever deployed? Well, mongodb.com suggests that clusters of around 100 instances are kind of normal for large Mongo deployments. And in fact, in Adobe Behance in V1, they had 125 instances of MongoDB to support their activity feed system. So let me ask a second question. What's the most data you've ever stored in MongoDB? Well, again, mongodb.com suggests many terabytes are common for very large scale uh, MongoDB users. And in fact, uh, Adobe Behance stored around 20 terabytes uh, of, of data in those 125 MongoDB servers. That's quite a lot of data. Uh, you might ask why so much, and I would guess that that would be down to denormalization of the, of the document model. But the system was very slow because of the model, and it led to a poor user experience, so the activity feed wasn't particularly active. And eventually, the Behance team moved to a version 2 of the system using Apache Cassandra. So let me ask a very similar question. What's the largest Cassandra cluster you've ever deployed? I mean, the behemoth that is Netflix, I understand, has clusters of around 40 instances uh, for some of, some of its uh, demanding operations. Uh, and this is real web scale computing. Uh, Behance, uh, similar order of magnitude, 48 Cassandra instances to support their activity feed system. So again, kind of big data infrastructure right there. So what's the most data you've ever stored in Cassandra? And there are truly some stupendous figures here. I have to say, uh, Apple, uh, something around 10 petabytes of data in Cassandra. Netflix, around 420 terabytes of data in Cassandra. Some phenomenal amounts of data there. Real big data kind of territory that we're in here. Uh, Adobe Behance stored 50 terabytes of data uh, in Cassandra. And the question is, well, why? why? Why 20 terabytes in Mongo, 50 in Cassandra? And David shed some light on this, and he says it's because of the popular fan-out model 
uh, in Cassandra, whereby when a write happens, in order to make reads performance, multiple writes happen so that uh, in the activity feed, uh, someone that you follow, uh, when they change their output, you will get a write into your record. Simply put, what this means is a user with, say, 100,000 followers, when they, uh, when they add to their uh, creative output, it will cost at least 100,000 writes to those followers to make sure the activity feed is updated. Plus, of course, the redundancy that Cassandra needs to keep everything nice and fault tolerant. So this is really big data, I think. That's a lot of data. That's real kind of ideological scale big data. But what's kind of disappointing about this stuff is that a lot of the scale from those platforms, which are tremendously scalable, is used simply to keep the model ticking along. So if the past was tense, is the future perfect? Well, MongoDB and Cassandra are superb databases for scale, but they're not brilliant for sophisticated data models. There's no free lunch here. In having to denormalize a lot of the scale provided by those databases is simply eaten up in making the model work. So let's look at v3. v3 of the Behance activity feed was built atop Neo4j. So it's a fair question to ask, what's the largest Neo4j cluster you've deployed? Now, I've seen uh, one instance of a Neo4j cluster which had 200 databases uh, collaborating, but I think that was pretty unusual. Ordinarily, I see clusters of size 3 to 20-ish uh, in a single Neo4j cluster. And at the high end of that, it's usually because of multi-data center, so for geographic availability. At Adobe Behance, they use a three-instance Neo4j causal cluster. No eventual consistency here, of course with eight CPU cores, a couple of terabytes of disk, and 120 or so gigabytes of RAM. These are commodity servers. They're cheap to run, even in a cloud environment. So what's the most data you've stored in Neo4j? Well, again, I've seen rarely hundreds of terabytes using specialized storage. But usually, I see modest number of terabytes scale in Neo4j deployments. Now, this seems pitiful if you compare it against MongoDB or Cassandra, right? Small tiny data. Mm, pathetic, disappointing. Is that so? Well, Adobe Behance stores 33 gigabytes in Neo4j for the same functionality, which in units of ideological big data is 0.033 terabytes stored in Neo4j, with orders of magnitude, faster response times, with better functionality, and hosting new features, with significantly less operational effort. In fact, David Fox at Adobe says that their human maintenance hours are down 300% since the switch to Neo4j. They have a thousandth the cost of storage requirements. Far fewer instances of the database means a much lower TCO. The cost for just running servers is tiny compared to their previous versions. All of this while giving better user-facing functionality, faster response times, better curation for end users, ultimately driving business value, with no brittle schemas or other tiresome technical impediments to have to navigate. So do you remember when I started my little tirade, I asked what is 125x equals 48y equals 3z, or 20x equals 50y equals 0.033z? Now you know, a modest three-instance Neo4j cluster it's the same as a 125 node MongoDB cluster or a 48 node Cassandra cluster. So the next time you're wondering if Neo4j will work and scale for you, think whether 150 MongoDBs or 48 Cassandras with many terabytes of data is enough, and then make the sensible choice and deploy a Neo4j cluster. So I'm Jim Weber, Neo4j's chief scientist. I hope this has been a fun few minutes for you. I'll see you in the Neo4j community.